Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Aho here with KissAnalog.com. We're here with Unity in the lab. I have a switching power supply, bench power supply, right? Uh, 600 watt, goes up to 150 volts, 10 amps. Pretty cool power supply. What is this? The UDP 6953B. Very nice. This one's brand new. Two, I think they're both new. This one here, I'm not even sure if you can get it yet. Very nice, four outputs. It's got your tracking power supply, your plus minus 32 volts at three amps. But then it also has 15 volts at uh, three amps, I think it is too. So it's zero to 15 at three amps. But then they also give you the zero to six volt at 10 amp. So it truly is four outputs. Whoa, and actually, you know, sometimes people would call the USB output another output, so <laughs> five output. No, but they call it a four output. Very nice power display, very cool. I don't know if you can see the display any better. Um, so what we wanna do is we wanna look at the noise on a linear, which this guy's a linear, kind of a heavy beast. This guy's 600 watts, very light switcher. So we wanna look at the noise on a switcher and a, on a linear, and you know, it's something to be aware of, right? But is it something to be wary of, <laughs> to be, you know, should you should you worry about it, right? Uh, or not? And what can you do about it? I want to show you. All right, let's do this video. Oh, and by the way, we're going to use the Unity UP0-1204. This is very nice scope, guys. Might not be a 12-bit, but this is the latest, greatest scope these days, 8-bit scope. So as far as 8-bit scopes go, this is, a, this is a great scope. I'm going to talk more about it in another video, but... We're gonna use it in this video, so let's do it. All right, guys, we're back down here looking at the bench, and I got this eight ohm, 200 watt resistor. It's pretty non-conductive in the audio bandwidth. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect it to the wires here coming from the power supply, okay? So now we have an eight ohm load. So now when I turn on the output, which is, it's actually, oh, it's actually on right now. We're only pulling about a half a watt, okay? So I'm gonna tell you what wattage why we're looking at the waveform. So we're gonna put these leads up here. All right, so let's come back up here. All right guys, so that's what it looks like, peak, peak. And here, we'll just get a few more cycles so we get it. So that's one millisecond per, you know, as you can see how it's kind of bursting. It's on and off and on. Okay, so let's go ahead and we're about almost half a watt. I'm gonna bring up the voltage so we can get a little more wattage. Okay, there's one watt. Now it's AC coupled, so we're looking at the output, but we're AC coupled up here, okay? So that way, here, let's open up the thing. So all we want to do is look at the ripple on top of the DC voltage. So we're at five volts right now. I'm just bringing the voltage up. You can see how it's running more continuously. The burst modes are starting to fill in. Okay, we're at 20 watts right now, guys, okay? And remember, this is a 600 watt power supply, so we're still barely exercising. Now we're at 40 watts. But you see how the noise, see how it's starting to run more continuously? So it actually, a switching power supply with no load on it sometimes runs the worst. But it doesn't really get that much worse. Here, we can get a few more of these pulses in here. Now I'm five milliseconds, so you can kind of see the shape of them. I'll zoom in. They still just narrow spikes. What that means is there's not very much energy in this stuff. It's just narrow little spikes of energy, okay? Scope has really deep memory, so we're not gonna alias or anything like this. This is actual waveforms that we're seeing. Okay, I'm gonna go up in power a little bit more. Okay, we're around 93 watts. 90, uh, you know, we're 127 watts. So see how it's pretty much getting filled in now? So uh, 180 watts. So I'm, I'm getting the extent of the resist right now, but you can see how it's pretty much filled in. I'm gonna capture that. All right, so we're probably okay running that resistor for a little while, 200 watts, what it's rated for. But I just, you know, I'm gonna turn this switching off and everything just so we can zoom in so you can see what it looks like. But you can see peak to peak, it's about two volts, okay? It's currently a half a, a volt per division. So, and you can see how it's filling in where it's running pretty much continuously. So it, it doesn't really get a lot worse as far as amplitude, right? 
it's, it's just starts getting more and more spikes. You can see how many more there are, and you can see how more consistent it is. It's like the transistor turning on, turning off, turning on, turning off, and then the output transistors, they're, uh, the synchronous rectifiers, they're FETs instead of diodes, so they're switching on and off too. So this noise is kind of hard to tell exactly where it's coming from. Also, the power supply could have a PFC converter as well as some other bridge converter or something like that. So we could be seeing the two different uh, switchers on the input of the power supply it might not even be the uh, rectifying diode. So, um, but yeah, there you go. And then there is this off period where it's like taking a break because it's still not, you know, 100 or 200 watts. We're only about a third way to the max. So, uh, but yeah, you can see, guy, it's just a whole bunch of narrow spikes. Uh, with no real amplitude. It's not like, uh, you know, what we'd think is a linear power supply or low frequency switchers, what I call them is 60 Hertz, where it's fully rectified, 120 Hertz, where it's a ripple, you know? Uh, these are just spikes. So very low energy in it. Okay, now I wanna show you something and we're gonna look at this in a different way, okay? And I'll show you what we're gonna do. All right, guys, I'm just showing you um, a Y capacitor. This is what we call Y capacitor because it goes from it goes from line to ground or neutral to ground. It's a 4700 puff, so not a very big capacitor as far as capacitance goes. It's big because it's what we call a safety capacitor, RFI capacitor, or EM, EMI capacitor. I just got it because it's just a low value. I just want to show a low value capacitor, not like a 10 mic fair you know, one mic fit or something like that. It is ceramic, so it's high frequency, okay? But what I want to show you is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to put it across the terminals here of the power supply before it goes into the resistor. And I want to just show you what a high frequency capacitor like this will do to uh, low energy, high frequency noise, okay? Let's go back up and look at the scope. All right, guys, now I want to show you something else. Let's come back down here to load. All right, so this time what I want to show you is instead of connecting to this resistor, okay, it's cooling down a little bit, still kind of hot. Uh, I'm going to bring this over. Now, this is a typical Class D amplifier, right? It's just, it doesn't even matter if it's Class D or anything. We're just going to connect to it and see here's the input terminals. It'll take up 48 volts. But what I want to show you is they didn't even do a very good job of trying to filter or bypass these. They should have ceramics right here. They've got this aluminum electrolytic, but I don't even see any ceramics nearby. There might be some underneath the heat sink, I kind of forget. But you know what, guys? They should be, there should be a nice ceramic right across these terminals. I've powered this amplifier before and tested it and shown uh, the noise it creates and how putting a ceramic or a couple of ceramics even across here uh, can really reduce that noise that even this guy creates, okay? But what I wanna do is just show you as a test bed that I'm just gonna connect these leads to it while you're watching the waveform up here and I'll talk you through it and you'll see when it's connected, not connected. All right, guys, there's our waveform again. And you know what? This is a no load one. I'm gonna go ahead, whoops. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in on this again so and I'll bring the trigger down so it'll trigger on this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just look at this waveform, okay? Now, I'm gonna tell you when I connect it up to the terminals, and I don't even have to tell you, cause you'll see. So let me see. Yeah, obviously it's connected. So yeah, there you go, guys. Uh, just having it connected, even though there's not even very good uh, filtering capacitance on this board, it still just kills that noise, okay? Now, there's no power on this guy, right? So the other thing I'm gonna show you is when I touch these together, see how it kills it same way I do when I put a capacitor across it? Because when I put a uh, capacitor across it, high frequency, the high frequency component, which all that is, uh, is shorted, just like me 
take these terminals. And you notice me putting this on the Class D amp doesn't make that any lower. It's still the same amplitude because even though they're not very good capacitors on there, it essentially shorts all that high frequency noise, just like I'm doing right here. And by doing this, I can't even get that shorted anymore because I'd have to short it right here to scope terminals to get that to entirely, or you know, go away, right? Okay, so I'm hooking up to the power supply again. And see, there's the old nubs, just to show you before and after, okay? And just put a capacitor across there again, just to show you. Same thing. So it doesn't take very much at all to filter uh, your bench power supply if it's a switcher to almost nothing. All right, now, now we're on this uh, linear power supply, right? So what I wanna do is I'm gonna go into the plus and the minus, channel one, okay? And we're gonna go up to scope and take a look. And right now it's on, so I'm gonna turn, turn it off, okay? So let's go up and take a look and now turn it on. All right, guys, look how clean that is. I mean, so that's your, your linear power supply. That's what we love. That's what's great about linear power supply. So I just want to show you that. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. Still looks great. Now it jumps up, right? Because it's, it's you know, we got this AC bias, right? So it has to filter out the DC and then, but initially it charges up the capacitor and it passes it through just like an AC signal would. And so it shows like a high AC signal, but then it realizes it's DC as it charges up the cap and drops back down. So that's what's going on there. So anyway, there you go. So yes, your linear power supply is very quiet. All right, so now you're asking how quiet? I'm at 200 millivolts still where I was with the switcher. Okay, so let's zoom in. There's 100 millivolts, 50. I go to 20, I go to 10 millivolts. Look, it fills up the screen. It's 10 millivolts per division. So, wow, look, there is a little bit of noise, even on a switcher. Now, let me try that capacitor trick, okay? I'm gonna take the capacitor, put it across the terminal, see what happens. Now, remember, the power supply is turned on right now. And there's it with the capacitor on, okay? Whoops. There's with the capacitor. Try not to touch leads here. Okay, let me turn off the power supply. Okay, it's off. Now it's discharging from zero, you know, down to zero volts. That's why it, okay, now here, let's go back. So see, there's just some noise even on a, on a linear power supply. I mean, come on, but we're at 10 millivolts per division. But now if I hold this cap there, again, shorts it. So see, I have two clear, divisions on top and bottom two plus a little bit right let's turn it back on and we're back about the same so it doesn't really matter whether the power supply is on or off it, there is a little bit of noise coupled okay then finally let me just show you what is or is not coming from the scope so that's we're still at 10 millivolts a little setting and when I just short the tips together, that's how much noise we get just by doing that, okay? Now, otherwise we pick up all the 60 Hertz low frequency noise. So if I short the tips together, that just shows what the the noise is, uh, at, you know, all the way through the system up to the probe, okay? Even if I short this, actually it almost gets worse, right? So yeah, there you go. I mean, when I short it here, it, imbalances the coaxial cable because now I've got a ground directly across from here to here and I'm only using the center line. So if I don't short there, it's forced um, to couple all the way through the probe. So there you go. Hope that helped you guys uh, understand the noise on switching power supplies and linear power supplies. All right, guys, I hope that helped um, to see the waveforms and what we did and, you know, how much noise you can cut down by just simple capacitor. Most circuits you connect to, pretty much any circuit you connect to, should have some filtering at the input, right? So I was just showing you the loading effects of that filter, the capacitor, what it will do to quiet down the output. 
Now, the thing is, is as you know, you power an amplifier like this, like let's say this class D, it's going to have linear regulators and that that's going to further reduce that noise big time because there's some noise rejection ratio on these regulators inside these, uh, you know, inside pretty much any component you have. Switching power supplies are everywhere, so I don't think it's a problem, but it's also nice to see how much noise and what it looks like on each power supply. So we're going to look at, we're going to start taking a closer look at that on some of the lower cost switchers. I have some more linear power supplies, the big old HPs back here, big old behemoths, you know, and yeah, so I've got a bunch of different power supplies here that I can test and show you what noise looks like. And I have some filters and stuff that I, I think I'm going to show you how you can use those to also further reduce that noise if you need to, if you have something sensitive, for instance. But hope this video is helpful. You can use that super thank you button to buy me a cup of coffee or a beer for a rant. And uh, I want to thank Danny, my team member, and all the other YouTube members. Really appreciate you guys, as well as all my Patreon members. Appreciate you guys. It's been a steady number for quite a while. I was just talking to my wife about that. For about a year now, uh, spree, you know, you'd think with how my channel has grown, money would change too, but it really hasn't. It's, in fact, it's dropped a little bit since a year ago. It's kind of crazy how YouTube is these days. Um, yeah, I kind of wanted to talk about that. A couple of channels I watch and what's happened to them. So, all right, guys, uh, you can help a lot by subscribing hitting the like button, the thumbs up button down there, okay? That's a free way to support the channel. Use those links down below, those uh, affiliate links. That gives me a little kickback, might help me a little bit. So really appreciate Unity sending out these things because I can't afford to buy these to show up to you, so they loan them to me. And really be nice to have, especially this guy in the bench. I think that totally replaced my other Unity over there, but they're expensive. They send them out. Uh, you know, for me to show you guys, and I appreciate that. Hope you guys appreciate it too. And then we're gonna, you know, if you can tell all this Unity stuff, man, the equipment today that we get out of China, Unity, iTech, Matrix, all top notch stuff. So I'm really happy to show it to you. And the pricing, I'm not even sure what the price is on this because it's brand new. I think this one's new too, but I believe it's like around 1500 i think that's what you can buy now but yeah 600 watt power supply though so compared to other name brands that's pretty low cost but still uh i've only been able to use them a little bit so there you go thanks unity for sending them out and i need to send it back to them so they can take it on the road and show it to some other people some of the shows they go to but yeah there we go guys Hope that was a good video. Hope you learned something. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.